Welcome to the next episode today where we rebuild Yamaha outboard carburetors. You can see this specific configuration comes in a pair of carburetors, kind of neat. Now, if you're wondering, this process is gonna be pretty much the same for all your mid 80s all the way up until, geez, late 90s carburetors. It also, I noticed these were used in everything from, I believe down to 90 horsepower all the way up to 200. So these are gonna be pretty much the same no matter what your horsepower application is to a certain extent that is. Now, let's talk about what we see here. This one, I've already rebuilt off camera. You can see it has some of the new hardware here. Super neat. Not too hard, but I wanted to show you what a cleaned and rebuilt one looks like superficially. We're gonna get into rebuilding this other one on camera here. This one is the lower one. You can see it has a choke attachment to it and some of the linkage. What you're gonna to wanna to start off by doing here is you don't wanna damage the linkage that's here. So you wanna be very careful about how you remove this. You can see I've already removed this other side. And if you do happen to damage one of these clips, you wanna make sure you go ahead and order a replacement. I've seen people use zip ties and everything. I think it's kind of lazy. And these parts really aren't that expensive, but you can see that linkage has come off here. And you can see in general here, this thing is just really greasy. And we're gonna help clean that all off. All right, what do we do first is you wanna inspect some of these other clips as well, see if they're damaged. These look like they're very greasy, but all together they're in pretty good shape. You can see some of our jets that we have here. Now, one little disclaimer here, and I'll use my pick. These are a 60 size, or number 60 air um, jets, super small. Whereas these up here are gonna be the larger ones. They have 290 labeled on these upper ones. And over here, these are labeled 60s. Now, if you have a mid 80s to up until 1989, if you damage these 60, uh, number 60 jets, or these are for your air, you will not be able to find a replacement. Now, starting in 1990, they went to a different style, number 60 air inject, uh, air, I guess it's like an injection or something. But either way, this one doesn't, you can't buy replacements for these guys right here until 1990. So if you have the older carburetor from, for example, like this one from 88, if you ruin these, you will not find replacements and you will have to buy another carburetor. Keep that in mind when you go to try to remove these. All right, I've already taken the plate off here. As you can see on this side, it's just held in by a Phillips, single Phillips screw. There's this plate. And then also there's a gasket underneath it. Now, once you remove the Phillips screw, the gasket and the metal plate, it exposes these two little air injections. Um, these are the larger ones, as they call it. And they're not always the easiest to get out, but these I found are pretty easy to remove. Let's see if we can pop that one out. Notice they're very greasy here. And the number that's written on this is 290. I wasn't able to find replacement um, main um, air jets, as I call them. So if you do lose those on anything that was made before 1990, you're gonna have some problems. Keep that in mind when you're doing this, you don't wanna damage anything. This carburetor, I believe, was rebuilt once before, only because I could see this Phillips screw had um, marks on it. All right, 
So that's the other one right there. We're at two. Now, like I said here, it's kind of it's kind of up to you on these guys if you want to remove them or not. Personally, I feel like what you could do instead of removing these two guys is you could fill up, right? You could fill up this portion in here and kind of blow some of that air out. But for the purpose of this um, video, I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove these and hopefully we don't strip them out. So use a really good flathead screwdriver and you wanna press super hard where you don't end up stripping that out and be super careful. If you do have a 1990 uh, carburetor and you can use these, these are $25 a piece for that little guy. So keep that in mind. Notice here, see if I can get it out. Notice the difference between the two. One is super small and the other one is a lot larger. One has coarse threads, the other one has fine threads. But the hole in between both of them are the same. Tons of research on that one and no replacement parts are available. All right, let's see if we can get this other one out. I'm gonna press really hard on it so I don't strip it. And lucky for me, this one came out super easy. All right, and there you go, there's four. As I mentioned, if you lose these four little guys right here, your carburetor rebuild process just got a lot more expensive because as far as I could see during my research, they do not make replacement parts for those. And by losing even just one of them, you will lose uh, your ability to rebuild this and you'll have to buy a whole nother $400 carburetor. All right, let's go ahead and move this around here. We've got these other two guys as well. Let's go ahead and remove those. I noticed on the other one, when I rebuilt it, wasn't too difficult. But we are gonna run into a spot here in a minute where we run into these little flathead guys. And you can see I've already tried to remove them. And we gotta use a little special, little different process to get those out. All right, let's go ahead. All right, so let's count what we got so far removed. One, two, three, four, five, six. Don't lose them. It'd be a bad day. All right, now you can see we pretty much removed a lot of what we see here, but at some point in time, we need to remove these flathead pieces. And I've, I've even soaked them in um, penetrating oil multiple times to try to get these guys out. And I had no luck at all. And you can see I've already kind of worked pretty hard with my flathead to get it out. So I'm gonna show you my recommended way of removing it. You're gonna want a, a nice hard surface to start, you know, set your carburetor. And be careful too, cause see these butterflies. If you just set it like that, you could damage the butterfly. So you need to be super careful. Now, this one's gonna be kind of difficult to do because it's turned on its side. So I'm gonna have to be kind of careful when I do this, but I'm gonna set it, I'm gonna set the carburetor pretty close to, let me turn this guy in all the way so I don't damage the threads. I had, I had started to um, remove this before I started the video. So I'm actually gonna use this as kind of a pivot point, but I don't want to damage any of these plastics here because they do look like Look like they're in pretty decent shape still. So I'm just gonna use this as a pivot point. All right, and we need to spin this 
this guy counterclockwise. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my center punch like that, and I'll grab my hammer, and it shouldn't take much. It really shouldn't. And that should be enough to break it loose, see? Nope, doesn't look like I got any luck out of that one. All right, and in fact, it looks like it kind of jumped out of the housing a little bit. So let's go ahead and try it again. Now, depending on how bad this thing is stuck, I may have to give it a few good whacks. All right, let's see. You can see I've kind of, and that's probably why in the replacement kit that they give you those, because they know already. Oh, yeah, there we go. If you try to use a flathead to get that out like I did, you're gonna be waiting a while to get that out. I'm telling you, I had no luck getting that out initially. All right, let's talk about the next little guy here is when you're pulling these things out, be kind of careful because what could happen if you get too close to the outside edge, you could accidentally chip part of this housing. And as long as you don't chip too much of it, you'll be okay. But if you happen to take off the entire side of this housing and this thing won't seal anymore, well, your rebuild, as we talked about earlier, is gonna get a lot more expensive. So now that this one is kind of in a better position, although I'll probably keep it held up. And you can see I'm just doing this with two hands. We're gonna do the same thing with this guy. All right, let's hold. See if I can hold the carburetor here. Now, I know I'm gonna get some comments because I have in my prior videos. I'm gonna have my assistant with her fingernails hold this carburetor in a certain position so you all will be able to see this a little bit easier. All right. Here we go. You can get an up-close shot here of me. And you can see I'm kind of staying away from the housing at the very end. I'm trying to put it in a little bit more uh, inwards. Let's give a little tap. Missed right there. Let's try it again. And like we said, we're not trying to kill it, right? We're just trying to loosen it up a little bit. See if it's enough to spin it. All right, nothing there. I tell you, these guys probably haven't been removed maybe since the 80s, 1988 for this one. All right, let's give another tap. I think that's one at that time. Let's see. I think, did it come out? Nope, oh, hold on, it looked like it may have. It's hard to tell with this guy. No, nah, I don't think so. All right, and if you run out of material to hit on it, you may have to spin it around a little bit. Closer to the edge. Try not to mar up any of the housing if I can. Yep. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you remove it. Kind of one of those tricks that I had to figure out because it wasn't very intuitive. And there's the other cap. So where are we at so far? We've got six. Let's see if I can, you can see it off camera here. You can see I've got the, let's move the block of wood so far. We've got these two end caps. We've got the 290. I think they're called the main air jets. Put those together. 
We got these little flat guys. They don't have any holes in them. Just standard. And then these are number 60. They don't make those four anymore. So like I said, don't lose them. So total two, four, six, eight. And we also can loosen up these idle air screws if you need to. For the purpose of this video, we can clean this whole thing without removing those screws. So there's no need to remove them if you don't need to. And then if you do happen to remove those, you're gonna have to adjust your idle um, air afterwards. And we don't need to do that. So that is pretty much it for this part. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna remove where the floats are. And you, you also could, if you like, um, depending on what order, you can remove these other, other screws as well. But I'm gonna go ahead first and I'm gonna remove this uh, housing at the bottom. You're gonna find when we do this, that the housing, mainly in, in these bowls from years and years of buildup of nasty fuel, varnish and things like that, there's gonna be a lot of nastiness in here. So keep in mind, we're gonna need a lot of carb cleaner to get this thing looking right again. I think we got just about all of it loosened up. If you notice, a lot of this wasn't torqued up very good. That's probably why we had a lot of leaks. All right. Now, I noticed before with that other one that these um, two pieces almost kind of feel like they've plastic welded themselves together. Let's see if we can get this last guy out here. And I'll show you what I recommend. If it feels like they don't come apart, whatever you do, don't use a regular hammer, if that's what you're thinking. All right, see this guy right here? Find a nice solid place to give it a little whack with. I'm gonna use this guy here and I'm just gonna give it a little tap. Remember your goal here isn't to destroy your housing. There we go. One thing that I'm gonna caution you all about, just like with some of my other videos, is don't be this guy that does this. If you damage this housing by marring it up like that, you're wrong and you won't be able to fix it. This has gotta be a sealed surface, okay? And this is very soft metal. So don't do this. I know probably at least 100, 200, God, who knows how many people are gonna try to say, no, why would you do that? I don't have a hammer. All I've got is a flathead and I'm gonna damage it. Yeah, don't do that. All right, you ready for this? Let's see what it looks like. The seal looks like it's stuck in here. Oh, look at that, isn't that gross? You can see all kinds of garbage in there. Yeah, it's really no wonder why this thing wasn't running right. It would only idle, that's all it would do. It wouldn't do anything more than that. All right, let's go ahead. We need to make some room here. We're gonna set this guy aside for now with our other pieces that we've taken apart. And here's your floats. The floats have all kinds of stuff on them. Not surprising. Let's see, let's see mechanically if it was working. Yeah, looks like the valves are going in and out. All right, to take these apart, not rocket science, people. This little pin, just roll it out. Your kit has new ones. All right, set that aside. That's one, and we'll set this down so you can see. Here's one of the floats, and you can see the valve in your replacement kit comes with another one. Notice how it's hanging. Let's see if we can get it here. Notice how it's hanging by this clip. This little valve and this clip are pieces that come in your replacement kit. Let's go ahead and set that aside. 
Next thing we want to do is we want to go after the other one here. done boom look at this guy right here look how clogged this is terrible right oh that one came out completely yeah maybe maybe bad maybe good who knows we'll see all right we are just about there people we really are let's go ahead and pull out this old gasket we will not be reusing it so if you feel it uh, a need to destroy it on your way out no problem but definitely won't be using it and we do have to remove all the pieces of it here and you can see this has got to be the original I'm telling you it is just stuck all over the place here Now, you can get the majority of it off. We're going to be using probably at least like a full can of carburetor cleaner. So I'm like 99% sure a lot of this will come out when we hit that hit this with the carb cleaner. All right. So this is pretty much, in terms of the kit, this is pretty much as far down as you need to tear it uh, apart. We're going to leave these guys in here, but... We're gonna go through at this point and we are going to clean all the different passages. Let's talk about how we're gonna clean it. You can go to Harbor Freight. This, These are little mini brushes, just so you have an idea how small it is. Here's the flathead. You can see it's similar. Even the biggest one is about the size of a flathead. All right, you're gonna need this because there's a lot of little passages here um, where you need to get in here right and clean it out and we're going to wait to use these because these are relatively clean we're going to wait to try to brush all this out once we hit it with some good carburetor uh, and choke cleaner here we're going to spray this down keep in mind too as i have these these somewhat thin gloves on and even probably some of the thicker gloves if you get this carburetor cleaner on your hands, it will actually go right through your gloves and it will burn your hands quite significantly. So be very careful when you're using this stuff. Try to put this on a, on a surface and spray it like so, and then maybe use some shop rags to hold this up. But yeah, you really don't wanna get this stuff. This is just some nasty stuff. Don't wanna get it on your hands, all right? Now that we got that discussed, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna talk about this guy here. We have a little bit more gasket still on here. Get that cleaned up and let's flip it around because we still have one, two, three, four, five, six more screws to remove here. And don't worry about which ones go where because as you're watching this video, I will show you where each one of them goes as we're reinstalling everything. So for right now, just take all your stuff and put it, try to pair it up, if, I guess, if you can. That may help a little bit, but it really doesn't because we're gonna throw all this into a container here in a little bit and let the stuff soak while we're cleaning the main body here. Now these little jets here, I'm gonna show you something about them that is super specific. We'll save that for uh, a little bit later here. All right, let's go ahead and remove this guy. If you're wondering, save your gaskets with the ones that are at the very bottom because you will be reusing the gaskets here at the bottom. The ones at the side, they do give you replacements in your kit. Okay. Everything is in a pair here, right? 
So just keep that in mind as you're taking everything apart. Okay, notice that one, not surprised because of all the varnish and everything down there, you may have to use a crescent wrench for this guy. This one has an O-ring. All right, let's loosen that one. And then this guy here. Now that we've done that, we should be able to come through with our flat head. And let's take a look at that O-ring. Not bad, but this thing's definitely dirty. All right. Oh yeah, filthy, right? Here's what we got now. This bowl, or the float assembly here, is completely stripped apart. Notice we've got, right, all kinds of nastiness, even down here where it looks like it's been dripping. Here, here. What I want you to do, and this is where I'm going to um, pause my side of the video and do all the cleaning, because I'm sure you all know how to do that. You just need to make sure you have a boatload. I'd say at least for this project, try to get four cans of 16 ounce carburetor cleaner to do this project with. I found that you need about almost two to be able to do all your cleanup of all your parts and everything to be successful here, okay? And let me show you some of the tools that you're gonna need. Like I said, this is what they use to clean spray guns. You can find it, Amazon or Harbor Freight has that. Some other good tools too. Uh, Harbor Freight has this one, a whole variety uh, different types of brushes this makes it easy when you try to get into like this hole to clean um, this guy here this guy you know you have different uh, variety and then also i'm using this brush to get in here once we you know do some of the preliminary cleaning with the um, carb cleaner and i'll go in here and brush this up real nice and you want this not to necessarily be super shiny but you want to try to get as much of that debris, varnish, old gas out of there as, po as much as possible so you're not having any more clogs. This one, like I said, was in terrible shape. Absolutely terrible sh shape. The floats got stuff on it. We're going to have to clean the, the floats and everything too. Now, another thing I'm going to talk about right now before we um, start working on cleaning all this is go ahead and take a um, little container like a paint container fill full of water and put these in there these should float okay in that container water flip them around 180 degrees and let them float the other direction as well that's how you test if these floats are good if they sink or they start taking in water replace the floats okay super critical if the floats don't actually float it, the um, carburetors will not work right all right, so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and clean all this up using my variety of brushes. And we'll talk about after we come back, what I cleaned, how I cleaned it, and what you should be doing as well. Now what we've got here is everything has been cleaned. The package with the new parts is right here. And then we've cleaned up all of our bolts. I'm going to show you real quick the trick. All the, if you have a little cap, maybe you have you can use the cap from your uh, carburetor cleaner. Fill it full of carb cleaner, and put all your bolts in there and let it sit. Dump it out a few times, fill it back up, and that'll clean up all your your little miscellaneous uh, jets that are here. Now, some things that I've already done off camera is I put in new O-rings, so expect to do that. The original ones were, I think, a like an orangish color. And don't forget, use your brushes, and you're going to need to brush in and across and then uh, follow up with these guys with some carburetor cleaner. The two seals that are here are going to get replaced. I'm going to show you, other than just normal cleaning, right, you've got these 290 jets here you want to run a brush right through those but let me show you the critical one that is commonly overlooked and that's going to be these little jets down here notice how you can see through it 
at first glance, when you go to look at this specific little jet, you're gonna find that it looks just like a solid bolt. And that is incorrect. If that is the case, and this is likely gonna be at the very bottom of your carb, it's likely clogged. So you're gonna to need to take your, your brush and go across and down, across and down until this is completely clean. And you can see, see if I can get it on the camera, you can see right through. And initially it was completely clogged. It looked just like a solid bolt. And that is um, going to cause you problems as well. Take a look at the bowl here. It looks like there's still some particles in there, but I assure you I've actually taken a pick and tried to pull those out and they do not come out. So that is clean. And then using our brushes um, back here, I'll just grab a random one. We've cleaned out these little guys, cleaned out in here, brushed really well. And then we also used our little brushes in these little miscellaneous holes to include these guys, this guy over here and our jets our air um, air jets as well and then we clean that everything's good i'm ready to start reassembling everything at this point so let me show you how we're going to kick this thing off this is how i recommend doing it what we're going to do is we're going to start reassembling where the um, i call it the float assembly goes now remember i told you earlier these bolts right these little screws at the very bottom have washers on them you're not gonna be able to replace those. So go ahead and grab those two and let's thread those back in. You can identify these because they are flathead. They don't have any types of jets in them at all. Okay, let's go ahead. Now when we're tightening these, it isn't a contest to see how much torque you can put on them. So keep that in mind when you're tightening these down, they do have a little soft metal gasket on them and you can strip these out if you're not careful. So what I'm gonna do is I got it fully tight. Just give it a little bit more, nothing crazy. Maybe a few inch pounds, if that, all right. And these are identified, as I mentioned, as completely round, flat-headed screws. Now, you remember the ones we were just talking about? These little I call them bolts, but these actually have one, two, three, four, five, six. So these are hex heads that are flathead. These guys, if you go in your new kit, these are gonna require the new washers. It's the only one in most of the kits that I've seen that allows for new washers. All right, we'll set that one aside. You're gonna turn this guy on its side and start it. Always start it by hand. And keep in mind, like I said, this one is flathead as well, but it has six sides to it. New washer required. All right, let's go to this one over here. And let's see if we can get this one started. Apologize for the sound of the bugs. Cicadas are real bad where we are located and apparently making a lot of noise. All right, let's see if we can get this flathead on here. Which looks like I've got tool issues here. We're gonna overcome it. Same thing as before. All right, we don't wanna over torque this. Once again, these are the flathead bolts with six sides. All right, so we've done the round ones that are flathead and the flatheaded here, that's six sides. Now remember these guys here, these are the ones with our new O-rings. Let's go ahead, uh oh, sorry, almost forgot. Don't get ahead of yourself. All right, you see these right here? There are ones that will fit perfectly snug and there's ones that don't fit perfectly snug. The ones that don't fit perfectly snug are for the larger size jets that we're gonna use over here. So keep that in mind. Try to separate it, see how one's bigger than the other. We are using the smaller ones here. All right, thread it below. All right, sounds nice and clean, I like it. All right, there we go. 
this guy here. It's all the way tight. Perfect. Now, if you want, it's kind of up to you. I don't necessarily recommend putting too much on it, but just to make sure you get adequate amount of torque because there's only so much you can do with these flatheads, especially with these this older brass here. Okay, like I said, I didn't really put anything on that. And that's it. That is our float assembly completely reassembled. Now, let's jump back over to the main body. You remember these little flathead guys? Well, these these are going to go in the main body here in the center. All right, let's see if I can find my smaller flathead. Looks like an antique cuz it is. Notice how I closed the butterfly. Um butterflies here so we don't lose the flat head that's in there same thing don't want to over tighten it there's no gasket required on this one just in case you're wondering definitely don't over uh, torque these all right let's make them nice and snug all right so now remember the number six zero all right number 60 we're going to put those in there. These are super small on all the um, 1989 older ones. So you got to be kind of careful getting them started into this hole. And whatever you do, don't strip these out because it will be a bad day for you if you do. All right. It's such a small little hole in there. It's hard to get your finger to start it. So let's see if I can get it a little bit closer in here. Woohoo, finally, I tell you, that was not easy. The hole to clean these number 60s out is so small that I had to use a tack. That was the smallest thing that I have in my arsenal that would allow me to clean out these little mini uh, air jets, the number 60s. Now, keep in mind also, since we're talking here, I did look up via Holly and some of the other third-party uh, manufacturers that build carburetors, including Yamaha, to see if I could find maybe just a replacement kit for these, and I had no luck. So as it states, as you're watching this video, I was not able to find uh, even a third-party or any of those sites that would sell these, maybe even a larger kit. So just keep that in mind. If you damage these, as far as I can see, they do not have uh, replacements available. So let's see if I can get the flathead in there. And that is as good as that one's gonna get. These are the two, the next ones that go on this larger body here. These are the two nine zeros. And it looks like I put it in upside down here. Let's try it again. I'm gonna put my finger there. The first time I did this, I was able to actually drop these 290 um, jets in there and it looks like I did on that one and it landed right in the hole the first time and you see if we can get a shot you'll see me starting to turn them in it looks like we're making good progress in this one this one they don't turn because these are, I believe are the larger threads they only have looks like three threads in there before you're completely torqued down all the way and as I saw like I said these jets are responsible for uh, air intakes okay so number 60s here two nine zeros on top let's go to our kit remember this guy let's go ahead this is part of our new uh, replacement actually I have the top in the um, my shed here I'll go get those in a little bit and um, let's go to the next thing which is these little brass caps let's see if we can tighten those down now one thing is for sure I am sh sure as heck not going to put as much torque down on this one as was originally. I think that's ridiculous. 
All right, let's see if we can start this guy here. Definitely don't want to cross thread. I made it this far in the rebuild. I hate to see that happen. All right, what do you think? Now, I reach over here. There's the old gasket, as I mentioned. And then there's a little, there's a little um, Phillips screw that goes in the middle right there. That's gonna hold all this down, a little Phillips screw. And I'll get that, that screw that goes in there as well here in just a second. My, uh, my partner's gonna go run and grab it so we don't have to um, halt anything. Now, while I'm putting my finger here and we're looking around, you can see we've got just about everything already uh, good to go. We'll just put this last little Phillips in here. Just like you saw with the other ones, we're not gonna over torque that, but that's that guy. We're getting close, right? I mean, this didn't take hours and hours to rebuild. And we're not trying to make this a super difficult either. So I just wanna show you, you all can do this in your, your garage or wherever your shop is. All right, that's very crucial step. You'll probably forget it, so don't feel bad. You need to put your gasket in first before you do anything else. Now, if you notice over here, if you get in too much of a hurry, like I was, you're going to, actually I'll leave that there. You're gonna forget something, because I did kind of notice, and maybe you all did too, that these kind of sunk down a little bit more than usual. I just noticed it. And that's because I got in a hurry and forgot to put that guy in there. And I guess the other thing too is if you keep all your parts in one spot, if you notice you had extra parts left over, that should be your cue to go back into your project here and say, what did I forget? What did I forget to install? Hopefully it wasn't something important where you have to tear everything apart again. All right, there goes the cicadas again, making all kinds of racket background here. All right, here we go. All right, just for the record, these two little screws that came in the kit, I don't use those. I believe they are replacements for these guys over here, um, but all my screws that I have are in really good shape, so I'm not gonna worry about that. Now, this next part is actually pretty tedious, so I'm gonna show you what the trick is. Now, you see these floats, right? And now, I've already pre-assembled these guys these are little valve seals. This part I find is kind of kind of um, kind of difficult, but this is how I want you to start off. Hang it right, just like you have there, and your kit has these new little rods. And you'll notice this one's not doing it, but you'll notice it wants to swing. But always have your valve seal rotated down a little bit so it doesn't have a chance to come off and it'll save you from it unhooking itself and then just very slowly put your float and everything right back into place like so and you will need to check everything once you get it into place like I have here and look in there raise it up and down oh sorry I just noticed it wasn't on camera raise it up and down see how it's moving I got it in the first shot. I hope you're that lucky as well. All right, let's do the same thing. Just, we can see, we can do some repetition. All right, just take and see if I got it right there. Okay, hang it like such. And we're gonna rotate it a little bit forward so we can get it in the hole there. Right, and let's grab the replacement kit, uh, the part, the little rod, and we'll slide it into place. All right, there we go. And remember, like I said, go in and see here, raise it up and down to make sure the float is working properly. I know I'm making it look easy. Last but not least, 
Be very careful. You don't want to damage your floats. You made it this far. Let's make sure we got it orientated right. We got our gasket in place. There we go. And last but not least, remember these. It's off camera here. I'm going to try to pick them up with my gloves. All right. Remember these little four screws? Let's go ahead and start them in the holes. There we go. And remember, we've been talking about this again with the, I swear, it probably sounds like this on camera, but it must sound like one of these cicadas are right next to you. But uh, what can we do with these bugs here? All right, we tighten that one. Tighten this guy. Tighten this one down here and always go crisscross, right? You don't want to just go in a big circle because it won't torque down correctly. Go back and forth, okay. All right, so this is the last one we did. And let's go on the outer edges. I don't want it to get too tight, but I also don't want it too loose. I apologize, I don't have an inch pound calculation for this, but I'm if you have any questions on what inch pounds look like on this, let me know and I, I can get those stats for you if you need, but I don't have them at the moment. Okay, that is, believe it or not, a entire Yamaha outboard carb rebuild. I know, easy, right? What do we do it in, just under an hour? And there's the gasket that goes against the uh, motor itself. Hope you liked the video. If you've got any questions or concerns or anything re related to the carburetor rebuild, throw some comments in the comments field below. Like the video if you thought it was helpful, and we will catch you on the next episode. Have a good one, everybody. Take it easy.